The aims of our project were to establish if there was any correlation between the surface area of rocks on the seashore and the degree of biodiversity and species found underneath these rocks. The project was entirely carried out on location during the first year of Biology 1005 field trip to Bologna in Spain on the 12th and 13th of April 2013. This location is on the Atlantic and the coast faces broadly south-southwest. As well as Mediterranean climate, its proximity to the Med and the Straits of Gibraltar mean it has a very small tidal range, roughly 0.7 metres on the days of the project. The rocky shoreline is exposed at low tide, revealing a variety of loose boulders, striated rocks and rock pools of various depths. On the day of the study, low tide was shortly after 10am, so the area of interest had been exposed to the sun for a couple of hours. The mean temperature of the water in the rock pool area was 18.7 degrees Celsius. This video will explain the methods used and show some of the results collected, along with examples of some of the flora and fauna that were seen. Statistical analysis of the results will be presented following the video. Initially, a distance of 60 metres was measured perpendicularly to the shoreline, from the terrestrial vegetation verge to the rock pool area. A transect of 30 metres was then placed parallel to the shore at this distance. At 2 metre intervals along the transect, the nearest movable rock was first measured along the two longest dimensions to calculate an approximate surface area, and then carefully lifted and rotated 180 degrees. The rocks examined were limited to those we suspected were large enough to provide a local habitat, but were small enough for two people to lift without risk of injury. Once the rocks had been lifted and rotated, any fauna that were using them as shelter were identified or captured and collected to be taken back to the lab to be identified at a later time, as the experiment was time sensitive due to the tide. Identification occurred to family level and into species groups. The same occurred with any flora attached to or around the rocks. A wide variety of flora was found attached to the rocks we flipped over. Red, green and brown algae were often present. Various sponges were also found. During data collection, the plant life seemed to be present on various sizes of rocks and its occurrence was more dependent on other features, such as the placement of the rock, if it was in significant shade, the degree to which it was in contact with the seabed or other unknown factors. The animal life present under the rocks seemed more variable. Hermit crabs were very prevalent and shrimp common. Anemones were often attached to the underside of the rock and were normally found in groups rather than solitary. Nudibranchs also seemed to group together where they were present. Other examples that were found sparsely include sea urchins, chitons, and annelids. There were various issues with our project model, some which were known from the outset and others became apparent as we were collecting data in the field. Due to the time sensitive nature of the project and the tide, we knew our data set would be relatively small. We were only able to place and collect results from three 30 metre transects due to the time constraints mentioned previously. The distance of the transect from the shore was kept constant at 60 metres to avoid any effect distance from the shore may have on biodiversity. Obviously the time of year and weather, both at the time of the sampling and in the days preceding it, could have impacted the results. The location had also been examined on previous days by several other groups and so some creatures may have been disturbed already and not re-established themselves by the time we were sampling. During sampling, other limitations became apparent. These included that the transects placed crossed a variety of terrain, meaning the rocks flipped were varied in their proximity to other rocks, the degree they were covered or exposed by the water, the exposure to the open sea, and the protection offered by the surrounding seashell. Selection bias of rocks was also an issue, as we were aware of rocks we had previously flipped and probably unconsciously selected those that were reasonably different to the ones we had flipped immediately prior. There was some difficulty in consistently selecting the rock closest to the transect line as well due to rocks being fused to other rocks or even the seabed and having occasionally previously been disturbed by the groups that also sampled the area. It was noticed that some animals were capable of escaping the area before they could be identified, possibly also leading to some species being missed and lower biodiversity measurements overall. A larger data set would be desirable, a better representation of transects with an aim to eliminating shore distance factors and terrain variation would also improve the reliability of our data. 
More effort should be made to eliminate bias in the selection of rocks and ensure the selection is truly random, possibly by using a grid and randomly generated coordinates. This results in a far higher number of very small rocks being selected, and so this may have to be corrected for. Should it be desirable to expand the scope of the study, other areas with similar habitats should be selected, possibly in different locations.